Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Chevy from The Millennial Parent and today we are going through 30 activities you can do with your kids. That is right guys, 30 activities you can do at home with your kids no matter their age without any technology. The first one on the list is making slime. This can be edible slime, glitter slime, glow in the dark slime. Basically name it and there's probably a slime for it. Number two is making Play-Doh. Play-Doh is a lot of fun because it's a lot of texture play and you also get to explore with colours by making whatever colour Play-Doh you want. Number three is making cloud dough. This is kind of like Play-Doh but super soft and fluffy. Number four is making food. This is great for little ones. You can make pizzas, you can make cupcakes, you can make bickies. Even decorating food. That should be another one on the list. Number five, decorating food. Decorating the food you make. Number six is making paint. Number seven is painting. Now you can paint with brushes, paint with sponges, shaving cream painting, bubble painting, food painting by you know, cutting fruit, fruit in half, using it, using celery sticks for paint brushes, finger painting. Basically name it and there's a painting for it. Another great one for painting is water painting. There's these, there are these books that you can buy that have like little dots inside these pictures and you literally just have a paintbrush and water and you just paint over the dots with the water and the colour develops. Kids go crazy for this thinking it's like magic watching these dots just become this beautiful colourful picture. It's really cool. Number eight is bubble play. There is not a kid in this world that does not love bubbles whether it's you're blowing the bubbles, you're waving the bubble stick around, all the kids are having a turn blowing bubbles. Blowing bubbles or bubble play is a winner every time. Number nine is colouring. Just print out some pictures off Google. Colouring in. Colour in their favourite characters, colour in their favourite movie scenes. Colouring. Number ten are colour rubbings. Get your kids to find, you know, coins, leaves, flowers, anything that has a texture to it. Just lay it under the paper and do colour rubbings. Younger kids think this is really cool. This is also great for their fine motor skills. Number 11 is colour games. So colour recognition games, like where you can match the colours. You have, you know, the red car goes on the red card, you know, or, you know, match where's the green toy. Those are cool. Other colour games are like for colour mixing. So getting the primary colours, what happens when you mix them, stuff like that's really cool too. 11 is cutting paper. This may sound really bleh, but cutting is great, like using scissors, kid friendly scissors, is good for like hand and finger strength. It's also good for hand eye coordination and fine motor skill development. Even if for younger ones, just give them a piece of paper and just let them, just let them cut it up. You know, for older ones, you could get them to fold the paper and cut really cool patterns out of it. 13 is paper weaving, so cut out a shape or fold a piece of paper in half and cut slits into it, not all the way to the end, and then you get coloured paper cut into strips and just weave them in and out of the paper. Younger kids just make the strips bigger, older kids just make them thinner and challenge them to even make a pattern out of it. 14 is making kinetic sand. There are tons of recipes on YouTube, I'll also be doing a video soon on making kinetic sand. You can make kinetic beach sand, which holds together a lot better than normal kinetic sand. Yeah. Number 15 is playing with the kinetic sand. You can do so many cool things with kinetic sand, it's ridiculous. 16 is threading beads. For younger kids, you just get bigger beads and thread them onto a stick. For older kids, you can get them to make necklaces, bracelets, all sorts of things like that. 17 is puzzles. Now, puzzles can go for any age group. The youngest kids, you just get big peg puzzles with like two or three pieces. For the older kids, you can challenge them with something like 100 piece puzzles or even older again, you can get like 1000 piece puzzles. There are puzzles for all ages. 17 is pouring cups. Now you, this can be done with sand or with water. You just have two cups and the kids practice. They scoop up the water, pour it into one cup and pour it back. Younger kids go crazy for pouring. I don't know why, they just love it. But it's good for also building their independence for if they want to go get their own drinks. It's good for hand-eye coordination. 19 is playing sink or float. Now, this is where you get a tub of water and you test if things will sink or will float. 
For older kids, you can make this more challenging by getting them to make something that would normally sink and finding a way to make it float, whether it's them making a boat or making a particular type of boat out of something and seeing if they can hold something on top of it or seeing who can make a boat that can hold the most. Number 20 is science experiments. Now, as much as kids go, ugh, science, there is a science experiment out there for every kid that makes them go, cool. One that always gets the biggest reaction is bicarbon vinegar. Just goes everywhere. If you add food coloring in it, they can make a colorful explosion. You can even get them to make a little mini volcano and see who can have the coolest eruption. Number 21 is stickers and paper. For younger ones, just get them to put the stickers anywhere on the paper. Just get them used to peeling it off, sticking it on. For older ones, you can challenge them by having a picture and having the sticker have to go into a particular position to complete the picture. Number 22 is a diverse one. Number 22 is role play games. Now this can be done through getting different toys together and the kids playing you know, with little toy cars, little toy animals. Another thing can be like doctor kits, playing doctor, playing nurse, or if you add little animals into a doctor kit, it can become a vet kit as well. There's so many different avenues role play games can take. Number 23 is dress ups. Now this can be done through costumes that are store bought, or you can challenge kids to create their own costumes from clothes you already have. Other options are also things like playing with makeup, playing with face paints, and seeing just what their imaginations come up with. 24 is animal movement games. So this is things like challenging kids to jump around like a kangaroo, crawl on the ground like a gorilla, run really fast like a cheetah. Little kids go crazy for this. For older kids, you can just challenge them to see who can jump the highest or who can run the fastest. Number 25 is bowling with Skittles. Now you can make your own Skittles with plastic bottles filled with rice or with sand and your own ball. Or you can go to places like Kmart and buy a cheap Skittle set ready made. 26 is building with blocks. Now you can get the classic wooden blocks which are great for younger kids or for like the slightly older bracket like three to four you can get Lego Duplo or the older kids again you can get actual Lego. And building blocks is amazing for kids of all ages. It helps them engage their imagination to build whatever they want. They can create their own world. The amount of kids that love building up a tall tower just to knock it down will keep them entertained for ages. 27 is playing with a ball. This can be throwing a ball, rolling a ball, catching, kicking, soccer, any ball game. Bouncing so you can bounce a ball the highest, stuff like that. Number 28 is making clay. I haven't done a video on making clay before and I'll put it in the link up here. And you can do this for making statues, making handprints, thumbprints, all sorts of cool things with this clay. And it's just three ingredients. Number 29 are number games. Now, it may seem a bit uh, at first, but number games, you can teach kids how to count. You can teach them number recognition. You know, where's number one? Or can you find one toy? Can you find two cars? Things like that. Little kids can have a lot of fun with it. Older kids, you can challenge them with something more, like games like Sudoku and stuff are brilliant number games for kids. Number 30 is letter games. Now at first, kids are gonna be a bit nah, about whether or not that's worth doing, but it can be a lot of fun. For older kids, you can challenge them to write a short story. You can even tell them that they can pick a theme or you know, you tell them they can write a gory story or something. For younger kids, you can teach them you can teach them writing by tracing over letters, getting a whiteboard out and getting them to copy. Another good one is if you have a piece of paper and a glue stick, just write the letter with the glue and sprinkle sand or something rough over the top so the kids can learn the texture. And another really fun game is a letter scavenger hunt. So you can send them outside to find two things that start with the letter B, something that starts with the letter R, and see what they come back with. It can be a lot of fun. Bonus ones because I've gone over 30. Number 31 is gluing activities. For younger kids, it's the same as putting stickers on paper. You just put glue and put paper, glue on the paper, glue it together to see what they come out with. Even like putting glue all over a piece of paper and sprinkling confetti. Little kids really love doing stuff like that. For older kids, you can get them to do something more complex like building a paper structure requiring glue. 
I made a wicked, wicked Minecraft zombie costume out of paper and glue. You can do some cool stuff with glue. Number 32 are memory games. So for older kids you can have what's missing off the tray, for younger kids it can just be something like the card games. Number 33 is peekaboo. For younger kids this is great, you can start with your hands and peekaboo, or you can get a blanket or a scarf. For older kids you can just make this hide and seek. 34 are texture games, so this is where you can have different textures, so like some sandpaper and some cotton balls glued onto the paper and get the kids to feel it. You can have like a mystery game where the kids have to be blindfolded and they have to touch the different textures to guess what that is, what the item is. Number 35 are fine motor skill games. Now for younger kids this could be something like having two bowls filled with pom-poms and miniature tongs. You can get miniature tongs from Kmart for about a dollar and you can transfer from one bowl to another. For older kids you can organise it into different colours, so challenge them to put all the green ones in one bowl, all the blue ones in another, all the red in another. And for even older kids or kids that want more of a challenge, try using chopsticks. There you go guys, there's 30 activities you can do with your kids at home of any age, completely tech free. Let me know in the comments below your favourite activity or which activity you're going to be doing. Hit that like button if you found any value out of this. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Also don't forget to hit that bell because otherwise you will miss things. You will miss lots of cool stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye!